Hey Insiders, it's Rachel here and I work on YouTube Analytics and YouTube's recommendation system with Todd, who's also here. You want to introduce yourself, Todd? Hi, I'm Todd. I lead the product team responsible for the homepage and recommendations across YouTube. So today we're going to answer five frequently asked questions about YouTube's recommendation system, how it works, and how it may impact your video and channel performance. So kicking it off, I actually have a question for you, Todd. Um, this is a question I get from a lot of creators who are worried that if one or a few of their videos underperform, it's going to hurt their long-term channel performance. So is it true that a few poor videos can pull down your future video performance? I would say uh, don't worry about our systems making some decision about your channel being good overall. We're always going to be following the audience. And so if it doesn't matter to the audience that your last video wasn't as good as maybe some of your other videos. It's not going to matter to us either. We want each video to get out to the audience that's going to watch it and enjoy it. And we often see that um, channels produce some great videos and some videos that aren't as great. And so we're very careful not to have um, all of our recommendations driven by like channel reputation. We look at each video's performance. And so um, this is what enables some videos to go viral and other videos not to. When you see variations in your impressions or in your views, um, this is the system listening to the audience. And when the audience responds well, um, we reflect that video level performance. So um, unless you're really impacting how the audience is feeling about your channel and whether the audience is going to stop watching your channel in the future, um, I wouldn't worry about uh, variability or having a few bad videos. Um, know that your next upload, if you produce something that is really engaging to the audience, we're going to want to get it out there as much as possible. Great. So I'm hearing, don't worry too much if you're a few videos underperformed and video level signals maybe really matter. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say learn as much as you can based on uh, what feedback you got on those videos that didn't perform well, but know that you get a fresh start every time you upload a new video. So I have a question for you. Uh, if I have a channel and I'm uploading a bunch of videos, is there some sort of limit or you know, point where the algorithm just has too many videos that I've uploaded and it's not going to distribute all of them to uh, my fans via recommendations or notifications? Is there a limit? So no, there's no limit on how many videos can be recommended to a given viewer from a channel in a single day. You can upload as much as you want and how much viewers are willing to watch depends on their individual preferences. Our recommendation system will likely continue recommending them as long as viewers are willing to watch them. But if you are uploading more videos than usual and you start noticing that they're receiving fewer views per video, that is an indicator you may have exhausted your audience and uploaded too much um, that they're not willing to watch. So that is something to keep in mind as you experiment with how many videos you upload. Batch uploads can actually be a really effective strategy at getting people to watch more. We've seen some creators release a series like on a single day, which then gives viewers an opportunity to watch through them because they're all available at once. So it really depends on your channel and your strategy. Keep experimenting. Now, although there's no limit for recommendations, there is for notifications. So if you upload more than three videos in a given 24 hour period, the notifications limit is that viewers can get a maximum of three new video notifications per channel in, in that 24 hour period. And that was designed as not to overwhelm viewers um, who are more likely to turn off all notifications from YouTube if they get overwhelmed with notifications. So yes, for notifications, there is a limit, no for recommendations. Okay, I have a question for you, Todd. This is from creators who may have been around on YouTube for a while who are worried that they have a lot of inactive subscribers. Is that going to hurt their performance, and should they create a new channel? So uh, inactive subscribers, are they going to hurt your performance? I think the answer is going to be probably not, because if you th remember how we decide about recommendations, we're looking at each viewer when they come to YouTube, what do we know about that viewer and what and how can we rank the videos such that the videos that they're most likely to watch and enjoy are showing up um, at the top of their home page and, and other recommendations. And so for a viewer that subscribed to your channel, let's just say five years ago, 
and hasn't watched in the past four years, our system's going to know that this viewer hasn't watched your channel in a while, and your channel isn't going, you know, your new v upload isn't going to probably be the best candidate for that viewer. And so you're less likely to get a recommendation for those inactive viewers, which means that, you know, in places like the homepage and other recommendations, um, the viewers who are going to see your upload are the ones that have, uh, you know, are active on your channel and interested in, in watching. And so I wouldn't worry about uh, inactive subscribers hurting your performance because those those inactive subscribers are less likely to to see your latest uploads. Um, now you may say, oh, but what about the subscriptions feed? Yes, if they go to the subscriptions feed, they may still see your uploads, but we do most of our learning about uh, content performance based on the surface that we're doing the recommendations on. So if we're trying to produce recommendations on the home page, we're mostly looking at how does that video perform when we show it on the home page. So that information from the subscriptions feed about you know, a viewer saw an impression and didn't click on it isn't going to have a strong influence at all on the homepage recommendations, which are learning primarily from the homepage. So unless you like really want to rebrand your channel and just start with something completely separate, um, I wouldn't really start a channel because your old channel probably still has a base of subscribers who would be interested in your new uploads compared to zero on a new channel. And so I would start with the, the base that I have um, and not worry so much about whether uh, inactive viewers are going to hurt your performance. All right, Rachel, here comes one back to you. Uh, how important is external traffic to driving uh, your recommendations on YouTube? Yeah, so external is interesting. Um, some channels receive more or less traffic from external sources. And it is a signal that we consider, which is really helpful in identifying videos that became really popular outside YouTube. So if your video starts getting more external traffic, it can certainly help kick off the process of getting your video recommended. That being said, once your video is there in recommendations showing up in suggested or on the homepage, our systems are going to learn from how viewers engage with it when it is recommended on those surfaces. So do viewers continue to click, watch it through, and enjoy those videos? when they're being recommended. So if yes, like viewers find it interesting when it's recommended, it will continue to be ranked even more highly on that particular surface. So external is something we consider, um, but the long-term success of your video is gonna be how it performs when it's recommended to viewers. So what about creators who are concerned that maybe the traffic coming from external uh, websites, for example, is aren't clicking as much, um, or maybe their average view duration isn't as much. Um, is the system going to learn that this isn't a very good video if I have a lot of external traffic that is just not engaging as much? And I, I hear a, a very similar question around uh, ads. If I run ads and the people who click on the ads aren't going to be as engaged, maybe, as they are from recommendations, will that hurt my overall performance? Yeah, we get that a lot. So sometimes you're going to get traffic from sources where the viewers are going to be less familiar with your content and your channel. So naturally, they're going to be less likely to click or watch quite as long. So if you get more traffic from ads or external, sometimes you'll notice your video's overall click-through rate or average view duration will kind of tank a little bit. It'll be much lower than usual. That's not a problem in that in discovery, each individual surface like home and suggested have their distinct ranking models. So on home, home is learning from when a video is recommended on home, do viewers choose to watch it? How long do they watch and do they enjoy it when it is recommended there? So overall click through and average view duration sometimes are not as indicative of video's performance and it won't hurt your video's long-term long success because the recommendation system, again, is learning how is this video doing when it is recommended to viewers. So don't worry about lower click-through rates and average view durations if you're getting more views from a traffic source like the external. It shouldn't hurt your video's success. Great. So then we'll uh, encourage creators to promote their videos um, and get, get folks interested in, in their channel elsewhere as well. All right. Well, that was all the questions we had time for today. But if you have more questions about how YouTube's recommendation system works, 
impact on your video or channel performance or analytics, please leave your questions down below and we'll try and answer them in future videos. So thanks for watching and keep it real.